Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Mind Traveling. I am Jared. And I'm the hyphenate. And today we're talking about Tio Tehuacan, which is an ancient civilization located about 30 miles northeast of modern-day Mexico City in Mexico. And you probably remember me talking about it in the updates video. I went on a family trip there a few weeks back, so I got some awesome photos to run through the video. But first, let me give you a quick rundown of what Tio Tehuacan is. So, like I said, it's an ancient civilization. It was believed to be completed about 2100 years ago in 100 BC. And at the height of its population, between 100 and 600 AD, it was home to at an estimated 170,000 people. 170,000 people? At that time, that's like a massive civilization. It's huge. It's about 20 square kilometers. Uh, as of right now, they've only excavated about you know 20% of it, which is cool to think there's even more to discover. But in 20 square kilometers, 170,000 people, which up until the 1400s was the largest civilization in the Western Hemisphere. So at Teotihuacan, there's three major monuments and about 2,000 smaller structures that were like apartments and storefronts. So the three major monuments are going to be the Pyramid of the Sun, which is the largest. And it actually shares the same base size as the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Khufu, in, which is like in Egypt. the big famous one, right? Yeah. So two continents apart, and we have two different pyramids from two different civilizations that we think are two different civilizations, and they're about the same size, same like dimensions almost. Yeah, and you find a lot of eerie similarities when you look into pyramids, and we could get into that in a little bit, but yes. So the Pyramid of the Sun, you have the Pyramid of the Moon, which is the second largest, and then you have the Temple of the Feathered Serpents, which is the smallest, but it's the most decorated. You'll find... Um, you know, like stone carvings of serpents and birds and other creatures. Uh, the other two pyramids are pretty much just rock and platforms with steps. Do you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So what connects everything in Teotihuacan, the main street, you would call it, is the Avenue of the Dead. So the Avenue of the Dead is about 100 feet wide, a mile and a half long. On each side, there will be a lot of the mini structures, and then it leads to the Pyramid of the Moon. So that's where they did a lot of uh, rituals and a lot of ceremonies. So the avenue was used to walk up to this main pyramid. So that was like their the main moon. street. That was their main street, correct. So those are the main facts about Teotihuacan. And uh, I'll say, when I went there, I didn't really know that much history about it. It was in like a three-day tour that we did in Mexico City. So we had somebody that was telling us about it. And we always seemed to be running a little bit late. You know, we had 11 people. So You're in Mexico. You know what I mean? <laughs> so by the time we got there, there was only like an hour and a half. And it was more or less just kind of explore, do what you want to do, and then let's reconvene at this time. But uh, the only information I really got when I was there is how old it was and, um, you know, how big things were, to be honest with Super you. Super basic. Pretty, pretty basic. But when I got home and I looked into it, it started blowing my mind because at first I thought, you know, these are pyramids and all, but it's not like the pyramids of Egypt where it's these, you know, 10-ton blocks that you have no idea how they got there. And, you know, there's not a shrouded mystery around the architecture, at least, from what I saw. So these pyramids were made from, like, smaller rocks or something? Or uh, like, it seemed more... Possible? Yeah. Well, th when you go there, that's what you see, right? So that's not that's not really the case. But um, yeah, when you go there, it just looks like a lot of rocks cemented together. But I mean, it's an incredible monument. Still, I mean, for sure, at the time frame, just the size and everything of it is. It took thousands of people, hundreds of years to do this. Yeah. You know, so you got to respect that. And it's also in like a valley with a lot of mountains. So it's awesome to look at these pyramids. And then you see the mountains in the background, and I mean, they rival the mountains, which is pretty crazy. You know what I mean? That's incredible. They're huge. So <clears throat> as far as when I went there. Like I said, didn't really learn a lot, but when I came back, I looked into it, and I got some really awesome facts I want to share. Some stuff that you guys could do more research on, but I found the top five facts that I found the most mind-blowing. So I'm going to share those with you guys, if you don't mind. I'm excited. Nobody actually knows who built Teotihuacan. Like I said, it's believed to be completed in 100 BC, and then from 100 AD to 600 AD was the largest civilization that lived there. And then in 600 AD is when the Aztecs came and claimed it as their own because when they came across it, it was in shambles, basically. So it was empty, deserted. Nobody lived there. And it's believed that that happened internally. It wasn't like somebody or an outside group came in and conquered them. It wasn't, a, it wasn't an invasion. It wasn't an invasion. It's believed that it was the infrastructure itself that crumbled and it made everybody disperse. And nobody actually knows where these 170,000 people went. 
there's it's almost like they just vanished off the face of the earth and then a hundred years later is when the Aztecs and the Mayans came and they settled on this uh, on this ancient site. Damn, that's crazy. You know, so they're the people that gave it the names of birthplace of the gods and they made their own interpretations based off of the stuff that was still there, like the art and um, the structures and everything. You know, the little artifacts that they were able to find, the antiquities. So that's where we get the information. So nobody actually knows who built it. So a lot of this stuff is just guesses, but it's interesting to think for sure. You know, yeah, it's a huge I mean, mystery. I, I mean, that's a giant civilization to just be wiped out and then still. Like, it wasn't like their civilization got destroyed because if everything's still there and intact, like, just what happened to them? The whole city is laid out on an astronomical grid, meaning it aligns itself with the stars. So the pyramid of the moon is at the far end of the Avenue of the Dead. Then you have the pyramid of the sun to the right of it. And then you have Temple of the Feathered Serpents going all the way back on the avenue. So if you look at these and you put it next to Orion's belt, it actually matches up with Orion's belt and all the mini monuments and the mini structures also form other constellations. So Man. it's pretty crazy. Like recently something came out that a kid um, who'd been researching ancient civilizations and pyramids and whatnot realized that all of these pyramids or great monuments align themselves somehow with constellations or the sun equinox, or something of that nature. So he found a constellation that hadn't really been looked into yet, and then they matched that with the location and found a new civilization that had never been discovered before. Wow. So, I mean, it's not just a coincidence anymore. Almost all of these ancient civilizations have astronomy within the the grid of how they built these. And it, it feeds into the idea that the pyramids were built to teach us something. Like, the base of this pyramid, when you times it by a certain number, is exactly the landmass of the world, of the Earth, right? What the hell? And then um, the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza, when you times that by the same number, you get the circumference of the world. Do you that know what I mean? That is insane, man. And then they believe that the way that they laid out these pyramids and everything is like science and mathematical information they were trying to pass on to us to decipher, like a big puzzle. You know what I mean? Damn. So Teotihuacan is no different. It has an astronomical grid layout where there's constellations that could be matched to these monuments, and the Orion's belt is exactly the same layout. So pretty cool fact. That's blowing my mind just by itself, thinking of like 2,100 years ago for them yeah. to have like that much knowledge. That's insane. Yeah, like they believed that the reason that the sun and the moon appear to be the same size, but they're so far apart was to give humans, to give us the perspective that there's more distance out there between the sun and the moon, and it gave us a unit of measurement to measure outer space. Wow. It's like cra crazy shit. Uh, I don't even really understand what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. th these are the facts that blow my mind, right? So that's number two. Mica. Mica can be found in every structure at Teotihuacan, and the closest source of mica is 1,500 miles away. So that in itself is, how did they get so much of it there from 1,500 miles away? What's mica? That's the second crazy part. It actually holds no aesthetic value, or it doesn't add any strength to any structure. It's a mineral that actually insulates electricity. What? Exactly. So it's believed, because nowadays we use mica in uh, electronics and things of that nature, it's believed that all of these structures had some electric tie into them, and this mica was the insulator that connected all of them. So they had, wow. you know, knowledge of um, technology that we couldn't even fathom, you know, they would have, like electricity. They could have had lights in these things, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. So the first fact is they had to go 1,500 miles to get it. The second fact is there's no benefit to it structurally, so it all must be there to serve a different purpose, which would be assumed to be electricity. As I said earlier, they use these pyramids for rituals and ceremonies. What I didn't say is one of the main ceremonies they did was human sacrifice and animal sacrifice. Not surprising. So... It's kind of crazy because when I was there, you walk down this avenue of the dead, and just the name alone, it makes you feel kind of eerie as you walk down yeah. it. And it's, I mean, it's really hot. You're, I think, 5,000 feet above sea level, so the air is a lot thinner up there. And the pyramids, they have steps, you know, but it's not like a step that you would walk in a staircase. These are like really tall, really narrow, 
And just to walk up 10 of them feels like you're walking up a flight of 40 stairs. Damn. Because it puts your body through that much, you know, exhaust to get up them. So as you're walking, it kind of clicks in your head. Holy shit. People were lining up the sides of this avenue as somebody was walking down it about to be sacrificed. And then they had to walk up these two layers of the – or three uh, three layers, I believe, of the Pyramid of the Moon. There's like a set of steps, one platform, another set, another platform, and then the last set, and then the third and final platform on top, right? So they walked all the way up this in this high elevation. I walked up 10 steps and my heart was pounding so fast I felt like I was going to pass out. So think about making it all the way up there, and they probably don't give you a break, only to have your head cut off. <laughs> and I'm sure your heart pumping that fast. I mean, I, w- I almost wonder if that's part of it. Like, try to get people up there and have their heartbeat going as fast as it can. Maybe they're so exhausted that they can't. So when you sacrifice can't, yeah. them, I mean, the blood just comes out in like a half a second. And then they just let it go down the steps. Like, there's a Damn. lot of art um, in Mexico City of pyramids with, with blood dribbling down. So, and, and one reason that they know this is during uh, excavations, they found like hundreds of human bones and animal bones. Um, it's believed that a lot of the human sacrifices were captured enemies, but also it could have just been slaves or people that lived in Teotihuacan that didn't have money, um, you know, that didn't see a purpose in life. And at the time, human sacrifice was the highest gift you can give to the gods. Right. So once they've gifted themselves to the gods, the next step and where the layout of this city gets even more eerie is the soul is believed to travel down the pyramid of the moon travel back down the Avenue of the Dead, where it arrives at the Temple of the Feathered Serpents, where it enters the afterlife. In 2009, a team of archaeologists uncovered a tunnel that was about 100 meters long, 15 feet underground, and it went from the Temple of the Feathered Serpent out to a center square. They found around 75,000 artifacts ranging from human bones, animal bones, jewelry, um, rock carvings of, of tiny people and things of that nature. But the craziest discovery they made was rubber balls that were preserved for thousands of years. These were the balls that they would play sports with and whatnot. So whatever rubber they had used at the time and the fact that they were making rubber is a pretty incredible thing, right? Yeah, that's insane. So in this underground tunnel, there's a couple more creepy things. It's believed that it's the entrance to the underworld. So remember I told you how the souls travel down the Avenue of the Dead and then they get to the Temple of the Feathered Serpents? To start their afterlife? Exactly. So it's believed that the underworld, which to, to these people was the origins of life and the origins of the afterlife. So they built this tunnel in order to recreate what they felt the underworld represented. And the deeper that the researchers got into this tunnel, they discovered that there's a large pool of liquid mercury. So as crazy as the how did they do it part of the liquid mercury, the why is even more mind-blowing. So the reason they use liquid mercury is because it's silver and it shimmers. And they wanted it to mimic how a lake looks outside when the sun's beating down it. So like a beautiful glistening lake. And this lake is believed to be the entrance to the underworld where spirits go for the afterlife. Mercury is toxic. So, uh, yeah, and if you're able to get through it, you'll definitely be in the afterlife, <laughs> yeah. right? But um, some researchers even believe that there's a royal tomb, and they've never found a royal tomb at Teotihuacan. A matter of fact, they don't even know if the ruler was male, female. They believe that it was a female deity at the time that they worshipped, but all that's just speculation because the Aztecs came in, they did their own thing. So in order to get true knowledge of Teotihuacan, this tunnel and more excavation is going to have to happen. Right. You know what I mean? Because I didn't really get into it earlier, but what we see now is a few things. It's multiple civilizations have gone through this place and put changes on it. You know what right. I mean? It's like been manipulated, altered, etc. And then when it was excavated in um, like the 60s or so, they kind of reconstructed parts of it because obviously it's a tourist attraction right. in modern day, right? For most people, like 4 million people go there a year. So they also want to give it a presentation. So when we go there, the biggest mystery is what did it actually look like when it was built, right? And how big really was it? Because like I said, they've only excavated about 20% of it. So that's the basic rundown of Teotihuacan and five of the facts that I thought were the coolest. Uh, what, what did it make you think about, man? What are your thoughts? I mean, it just raised like a million questions in my mind. Like I'm wondering, one, they had this knowledge of how to use electronics before, you know, anybody else our electronics and, and how rapid we're learning technology and being able to create these things that it came from somewhere else. What if like this is the basis? Like they had that mineral that's used in electronics. Like 
what if they started that? Micah is definitely a crazy part of this. And as I researched it, the earliest dating they can find of it is about 40,000 years ago in caveman paintings. So to make it even crazier to think, cavemen 40,000 years ago were painting with this stuff. People in this, the past 200 years are learning about technology, but to think like that many thousands of years back that people already had like ideas. Yeah, I mean, I think when we think about electricity, we think of switches and light bulbs and things right. of that nature, but electricity is just a transference of energy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when we look back at a pyramid, we don't see much more than rocks because we're not familiar with much more than what it is from the outward, right? Or what they did with it. it. It's like a plumber. If a plumber walks into a bathroom, they see a million different things going on. But when I go into the bathroom, I think about going to the bathroom and taking a shower and washing my hands and, and what Flushing when you need to flush. You know what I mean? So... When you look at the pyramid through the scopes of mica was being used, I mean, these things were like power plants. Right. The big pyramids could have been the main power plants that harvested the solar energy and then dispersed it underground to all these mini structures. You know, so they wow. had distribution of electricity and um, possibly more. And it's, it's, it's crazy because, like, the pyramids, even in Egypt, are believed to be large power plants. And underground is where a lot of the mystery lays because there's underground tunnels. And uh, I believe there's also mercury that's been found at the, uh, in the tunnels at Giza. Wow. But Tesla, who was, you know, a famous inventor. Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla, yes. Um, he had a, I think it was a lab in Aspen, Colorado. And he had this huge, like, m m megalithic... Uh, iron structure that was harnessing electricity, but underground he had an exact duplicate of what's underground at the pyramids of Giza. Damn. That's so crazy. he even knew the knowledge of how they were manipulating the earth for electricity and, and minerals. And dispersing. So I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff about Nikola Tesla too, by the way. If you guys look at a Nikola Tesla, that you should be have another him, video right there. Definitely gonna be another video. But yeah, so the more and more people are researching the pyramids, uh, that's really where it looks like it's headed to. It looks like they and these massive monuments and civilizations were all paying homage to the knowledge that they had learned and passing it down. They were um, using astronomy to lay out these grids and share their their knowledge of the stars. And it's all just like a textbook. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Like, I, I know that a lot of people just kind of think like, oh, pyramids, it's uh, structures built by, you know, older civilizations and they use sacrifice and it looked really cool. And it was to worship like some people like they like, oh, you know, just the God or the Pharaoh or whoever. But from everything we've been talking about and just like this other knowledge that you'd like tied in. Uh, yeah, man, it seems like there's there are more layers to why these pyramids were created. I highly recommend you guys go do your own research on Teotihuacan. There's a bunch of great information out there. Leave a comment on the most mind-blowing fact that you found out in this video. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Let's Mind Travel. Where can we find you? My Instagram is The Hyphenate, and my personal YouTube channel is The Hyphenate. And until next time, safe travels.